Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Anthony James, who will be speaking about Soul Safari, India Immersion, life-changing adventure. Woo! G'day, my name is Anthony from Australia, and uh, I'm the founder of Soul Safari. I've got five minutes in that, so I'm going to have to talk fast, and I'll be running away from a Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Over the years, I've been really fortunate to be involved in in building, resourcing, and financing charities in China, in Russia, Thailand, Philippines, and India. And I've had what I consider to be a really rich life, and even richer now that I've met my fiance here in La Jolla, Nikki Jade. But it wasn't always that way. I was in the corporate game, you know, the whole thing, national practice, director of PricewaterhouseCoopers, Accenture, and all the rest, doing the whole corporate gig, three secretaries, corner office, fancy cars, and it wasn't satisfying. I mean, you've heard of all of that. You know, picture me, I suppose there were seven board meetings that day, and I think by the end of the fifth board meeting, I was ready to kill someone. I think by the sixth board meeting, I was probably ready to kill myself. And I think somewhere in the seventh, the universe sort of opened up and that, and sort of was like, okay, stop bloody blaming every other bugger out there. Stop whinging and being a victim, and start asking yourself the hard questions. And the questions I had to ask, I had to sit down there and say, have I lived a full and adventurous life? Have I loved? And did I actually matter and make a difference in this world? And the answer I came up with was no, no, and no. Bugger. But it's like what Porter said, is you get these random connections. You know, people come into your lives, and I met a guy called David, and, and, and that changed my life. And the thing with David is, look, he's not any saint. He's not like some guru. He's not like some angel or whatever in that. But, but, you know, he was going to get his life changed by being carjacked in 1994 by a, a nine-year-old Thai, Thai girl. He's, he's, traveling through, he's traveling through Thailand and the Burmese armies cross the border. They've gone into the villages of the, of the indigenous people and decimated everyone. Every single person was killed bar a few and some of those people were escaping. As they escaped, they were rounded up by human traffickers. The men were sent off to slave camps, the women were sent into prostitution in Bangkok to be raped 15 times or more a day. David didn't know what was happening. As he drove, he drove straight down into the killing fields. There, were, there, were, there was a nine-year-old girl and a seven-year-old brother who had four children with them. They were hiding in the bushes alone by themselves and that. They'd been without food and water for four days. They were delirious because of that, and one of them, the daughter, the, 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 the girl had a daytime vision. If there was a man who had no color in him, it was like the color had drained out of him, like they'd never seen white people before, then he was going to save them. He was going to take them to safety. And so when he came down into the killing fields, they ran out, they stopped him, and the little brother is shoving the four kids into the back of the pickup truck. He had no idea what to do. And the question I suppose I have is, what would you do? Let, let me tell you what David did. The first thing he did was he used his money and he got them food and he fed them. The second thing he did was he used his network of friends and that to make sure they got to a safe location in Thailand. And the third thing he did was he got onto his list of people and he let them know and he, he raised awareness. And that's how I got involved. And when I got to Thailand, he had 23 children that he'd saved that he was trying to feed, trying to clothe, trying to school, and trying to love. What I saw when I got to Thailand was this guy had a big heart, but he didn't have any leverage at all. And so what I did was, the only thing I could do is I picked up one of those handy cam things, I started filming what he'd done where they built some bamboo huts, I started to film uh, when they're making the little meals and that uh, with little pieces of bamboo trying to cook the, the rice and things like that. I had to come up with a creative solution. I, I used uh, some sort of photo editing stuff I'd never done before and we pitched it to Rotary. And Rotary absolutely loved it. They were absolutely fantastic. They listed us on the international projects list uh, of their projects. But Chicago gave us dollar for dollar matching. Uh, for every dollar that we raised all around the world, and we raised in the first two years one and a half million dollars. We were able to, to, with that, to buy land, to build dormitories, to build classrooms, to have teachers, to build gardens, to build plantations, to do vocational training and all the rest. 
and it wasn't until I was at a mastermind here in the United States, and I was sitting with some guys, like, you know, really clever guys, guys who'd, uh, you know, invented MySpace and all sorts of stuff like that, and, you know, for, that's the thing before Facebook. Um, <laughs> And, you know, these guys are really clever guys and, and stuff like that, and I really valued what they had to say. And, and they wanted to get involved once they found out what we're doing. And what I realized is, here's one guy, and, and he's rescuing 23 children. And when one other guy comes along, then we can rescue 517 children. So what would, what would the impact be if 12 of us got together and we put all our smarts and our heart and everything that we had, and what difference and what impact could we be? So the question I, that we realized is we realized that there were five obstacles to people doing their own soul safari. The first one is where do I go? The second one is who do I do with it and, and who I do with it on the ground? The third one is, is how do I launch and complete a project in a foreign country? Four is how do I make sure that the money gets to the people who it needs to get to? And five is is how do I get a tribe of like-minded people who want to come with me and make that happen? And that's what we do in Soul Safari. I don't know what your Soul Safari looks like, and if you already have one, please come and talk to me because I'd love to talk to you and see how we can work together. And if you don't have one, I'd like to extend an invitation to you guys. You can come with us, and maybe you're going to be with us this November in Calcutta in India where Mother Teresa walked, picking up kids off rubbish dumps. Matt, my name's Anthony from Australia. Thank you.